How's it going everyone? Welcome back. Hopefully everyone is having a lovely day. So Ohio State drops a third straight one to Michigan. A lot of the same story. You know, they went in there, played JJ McCarthy. They went in there, played Blake Corbin, this run team, a team that wins in a track. I mean, it's been a very, very, very similar team the last three seasons, especially from what they want to do from a game planning standpoint. Ohio State still hasn't had an answer. They're going to lose their third straight game when in really similar fashion. You know, the first half, oh, it's been a close game. You, have, you see a couple mistakes late in the first half, or early third. It seems like they get outcoached, outplayed in the second half. And again, you, it brings up the question. We hear it every year. When you don't win that big game, is it time to watch Ryan Day walk out the door? Should Ryan Day be fired? And it's a big question because... You really got to think about things here. First of all, you don't want to make a decision on emotion and emotion alone. If obviously Ohio State, Michigan, one of the biggest rivalries, if not the biggest rivalry in college football, and uh, you're Ohio State, you're Michigan, you, that's what you want. You want to win that game. A lot of people want to win that game more than want to win a national championship. You lose that game three years in a row, and you lose again three years in a row to a team that you kind of, at some point, you have to look and say, Where, where's the game plan? This wasn't a new look mission. This wasn't Kyle McCord one year, CJ Stroud another, and Dwayne Haskins another. Like your game, no, he was game planning against the same quarterback, a similar run game, and they just haven't had an answer on either side of the football. And say what you will about that, they start to get off to the slow start, and then you get out. And I think this is what I loved about Ryan Day throughout his tenure with Hall. So you get to the second half, and he feels like he is a different. He, he makes the good halftime adjustments. And he propels this team to win football games. But for some reason, that has not been the case against Michigan. Uh, it's been the exact opposite, even with a backup coach in there. And that, again, it wanes the question, are we thinking rationally or irrationally? Well, Ryan Day, one in six against top five football programs. If you're a Ohio State in a Ohio State program, you expect to win those games. You don't expect to win all of them, but you want to, you know, just like a Nick State, but you want to win those games. The difference in an excellent coach, a good coach, and a great coach is the excellent coach it kind of builds that a locker room kind of builds that culture that they win those big games. And on the flip side of that, I mean, Ryan day as an Ohio state coach has seven losses in five years. He's got an outstanding record at Ohio state. He's winning, one of the winningest coaches might still be the winningest coach in college football right now from a win percentage standpoint. Hey, you look back historically and say, hey, even, you know, Trestle had a couple, you know, what was it, an eight and four year he threw in there, a couple down years. Was it the fickle year where they had a really bad year? So as much as it is easy to say, hey, for most part, anybody can coach Ohio State and then go eight and four, nine and three. It may be, but do you want to go eight and four, nine and three? Because that's possible. You don't want to get uh, caught over your head here and say, uh, look at one game and look at Ryan Day and say, he's got to go. And then look back and say, boy. And on almost, you know, as a Reds fan, it kind of reminds you a little bit. It almost makes you think of like a Dusty Baker or in the moment. It felt like the expectations were really high. They had to do better. And all of a sudden he walked to the door. They they had a pulse sense from a coaching standpoint. So, well, it would have been nice to have him back. And that's the thing you don't want to get. And that's the thing with Ohio State. You're a prestigious program. You're going to get a lot of coaches there. But the last thing you want to do is say, all right, see you later, Ryan Day. And you're not able to replace him for years and years. And you're struggling. You're playing this game of musical chairs with the coach. I mean, do you have a do you have a next man up kind of thing? Because it's Sunday that you look at right again. We just said one of the winningest coaches in college football. He he can't beat Michigan. He has been able to win the big games, but on the flip side, he has won big games. Uh, he's beaten Penn State year in and year out. Uh, Michigan State was a top ten football team a couple years when they beat him. They've beaten Notre Dame now a couple of times. They've won the early games for the most part. I mean, they've gotten to the point to where they play Michigan if they're in there in the college football playoffs. If they're out, they're out year in and year out so he's winning the games he needs to win he's winning the conference games he's putting his football team in a position to make the college football players by the end of the year has it been pretty every time no but you know what they found ways to win football games and at the end of the day that holds a lot of weight because again as easy as it is to say hey prestigious program they should win every single year that doesn't have to happen it doesn't it doesn't at all but it does and that really raises the question to say you sometimes you just have to look at the numbers and say, is this is this it? Do we want to look at the numbers and say, this is it. We're going to back it up. Or some people can look at the numbers and say, hey, yeah, but there's more to it than that. The Big Ten hasn't been as potent of a conference of years late. Maybe that's got something to do with it. Um, Ryan Day's been, I mean, you look at CJ Stroud in the NFL right now. It feels like CJ Stroud. It feels like Justin Fields. And I think that might be what, that might be what's glaring is everything. Is did, did Brian Day get the most out of his quarterbacks when he was here? 
Because CJ Stroud is, I mean, he was good at Ohio State, but boy, you, you talk about turning a franchise around in one year. Justin Fields never got, hey, see, Ryan Davis refused to make his quarterbacks run. Justin Fields, hey, we didn't even know he could, but we knew he could, but we didn't know he had the abilities to do what he's doing right now in the NFL. May, is he an NFL quarterback? So we don't know, but we know one thing. He was not running the football like he is in Chicago as he is in Ohio State. That part of his game was never explored. Just like CJ Stroud, that part of his game was never explored until that Georgia game. And uh, CJ Stroud just put that team on his back. Nearly won a football game. You wonder about stuff like that. You wonder if the coach is getting the most out of his players. But you also wonder if his coaching style is the reason these guys are coming. Because these guys feel like he's gonna, they're going to get put into a system that's an NFL-ready system. Yeah, as we know with the guys like Urban Myers, like he didn't, he didn't create NFL ready quarterbacks because he was running this read option. He was running a lot of running uh, quarterbacks that wanted to run the football a lot. And a lot of those guys don't transition into NFL players. And the same can be said about the receivers. You don't bring the receivers in when your quarterback's running the ball. You have a run, a run heavy scheme. So when your, uh, your coach is Ryan Day and these wide receivers you're bringing, you look at this wide receiver room and say, hey, he's selling these guys on this team because of how much they are passing the football, the type of quarterback talent they're bringing into this organization. All that stuff has to be considered. You wonder when you bring in Coach Knowles and you see this defense start to turn things around this season. Yeah, they lost to Michigan again. Clean things up a little bit and they win that game. You wonder and say, hey, if they win that football game, do you question Ryan Day at all? Because this team overall over the course of the season really did turn things around. I think Cobb uh, Cob McCord's not a CJ Stroud. He's not a Justin. He's not a Dwayne Haskins. He struggles to hit guys. There's no reason at all Marvin Harrison Jr. should ever have under 50 receiving yards in a game. And he did it against some subpar teams. Uh, he, and we've seen why. Because McCord was missing him sometimes. And that is what it is. Sometimes you're just not going to be plow, uh, plow, uh, whatever, you know, spoiled with one of the best quarterbacks in college football every single year. And you have to find ways to win football games in other ways. And Ohio State was starting to do that with Henderson. They're starting to do that with their defense. And that's going to happen. Uh, fact of the matter is, we did again. We've seen them do some adjusting the coaching type. You can only do so much with, with what you have. Um, that being said, you give it a day or two to think about. I mean, I was, I was pretty heavy day one saying, you know, Ryan Day's got to go. And again, it could have been an emotional thing. It could have been a fact. It should have, could have been a thing that needs to happen. The fact uh, thing is, you have to question yourself. With is, do you, you how much do you put a, how much do you factor in the fact that he hasn't won the big games? Is that worth moving on from and taking the chance of not getting a you know as good replacement, but also knowing hey you could bring in a replacement next year. And all of a sudden, this football team is better than what they was right now, and they're winning the big games. There's going to be a lot of turnover when you watch Marvin Harrison walk out the door this season. Some of these other guys that's been around for a while, what's going to happen in that transition year? We'll see. I'm, I'm kind of... I'm, I'm really indifferent right now with Ryan Day. i kind of leveled it. Like, again, you know, there was a point he proved himself. What I loved about him early in his career, we talk about the emotion that we're worried about, but, you know, early in his, early in his coaching career, was, hey, this guy makes adjustments at the second half and does a great job. It's been the Michigan games that have, it's been the really good teams. It's been a good coaching matchups that he's had a little bit of a problem with. Big problem with when it comes to Michigan. And that glares. Uh, we'll see. Love you all. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.